Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So, there's been a bit of news while I was just relaxing in my webbed hammock. So, the first news came from the X-Men. The fact that Spider-Man and Thor team up, or meet up, or there might be a showdown in 2018. Interesting thought. You know, just the fact of... Because, yeah, Thor is going with Ragnarok, and what I kind of thought when I was listening to this, it's just a fact of, there's just going to be a movie out. You'll have Thor with a movie and Spider-Man with a movie in the same year. Maybe even the same month, or heck, a, maybe even, even though that's crazy as heck, the same exact day. Given if the Sony Marvel deal happens, that means that that's kind of ridiculous, the fact that they'll have, because they technically learn they kind of learned their lesson from Iron Man and Incredible Hulk. Given that technically they did have Captain America and Thor. But I think those were like spaced out. Yeah, so that's one thing they thought of is that you have to have the movie spaced out. Because if you don't, you'll have another Incredible Hulk on your hands. Where it's like, because one of them was good. The Iron Man was there. Iron Man was still in theaters when... Incredible Hulk came out, and as soon as Incredible Hulk came out, not a lot of people watched it because, well, Iron Man stole the show. I mean, if they would have waited a year, I, I already, I already just t talked about this in another video, so yeah. But anyways, a showdown or meetup? If they do do a meetup with Thor and Spider Man. That would be kind of weird, yeah, just like X-Men said, it would be kind of weird, but on another hand, it would just bring up the idea of the spider totem. So that means that they technically can start secretly planning a spider-verse of their own. Because, well, if they, you, they plan it right and make it that in Thor, they have like totems, the totem story, uh, that would be like a background part. But they'll have like a totem story where they talk about all those totems, the panther totem, spider totem. And, well, basically, it'll just, it'll just be nothing but the other comic book, you know. I got it. What it said in a comic book is basically that Spider-Man went through a change. And technically, I kind of would nod and say, you know why that change happened? Because of Sam Raimi. The Sam Raimi trilogy. They wanted to give him organic webbing that he actually can shoot from his arms and don't have to use the web shooters again. Yeah, I mean, that was a cool thing that they actually did, and I kind of like that concept. And like what X-Men said, no, no, it wasn't X-Men who said it. It technically was Comic Island, and if you haven't seen Comic Island, definitely go to the, their channel. Their channel is very cool. But Comic Island basically said just the fact of they make Spider-Man bigger than he actually was. The fact that it was a just a random bug bite, but the other storyline actually made it into more of something. Which I think that if they use that concept in Thor meets Spider-Man, I think that will kind of fit. That will somewhat fit. Well, anyways, in other news, Sony asked Michael, asked Brian Michael Bendis for web shooters advice in Amazing Spider-Man. And this came from you. This came from Yahoo. So, yeah, it turns out that's kind of cool. And they were, well, the messed up part is that they were stuck on the idea of should we use mechanical web shooters or should we use regular web shooters? Technically, in Sam Raimi's before they did a yeah, they did like a recount of what they should do. Yeah, like the test footage. You saw that Spider-Man actually did have web shooters. Actually had mechanical web shooters. But they replaced them because it's kind of like, well, think about the idea of all those web cartridges that Spider-Man has to have with them. Because, yeah, I mean, seriously. <laughs> so... It's kind of very, very cool. I enjoyed that idea. I wish they told me this, like, the year Amazing Spider-Man came out, so it kind of brings some hope. The fact that they kind of have a little cahoots with Michael Bendis, well, Brian Bendis, the fact of they actually have a connection with him, and they might actually ask for him to 
kind of mediate what they're doing with Amazing Spider-Man. Given, technically, if they would have went the Ultimate Spider-Man route, which, thanks to Avi Arad, he basically was the one who said, yes, it's based on the Ultimates. And if they would have continued on with that, and they actually had Brian Bendis in, on their speed dial, I think this franchise would actually have done a lot better than what it is doing right now. But I think it's, I do have to admit that is quite charming, just the fact of you, they did actually call Bendis. They did actually call him and asked, should we use mechanical web shooters? That is very, very nice. Too bad it wasn't promising for the next movie. And All I have to say is for them to actually have continued with it, I would have actually had someone in my with me someone actually who is doing spider-man at marvel actually in my ear telling me what you can and what you can't do i mean chances are he'll give you this idea of saying yeah lizard was a good idea to do everyone was anticipating a lizard but on the other hand the storyline you gave the lizard and the fact that you cut lots of his story part out just the fact of he he has a family he loves his son yeah it basically will bring the reason why you should care for the character and besides dr connors is not really a bad guy he's technically has the jekyll and hyde effect the fact that mr hyde is a bad guy but jekyll is a good guy so yeah well, anyways, that's about it, and chances are I will try to dig this idea up. I mean, I heard it many times before, the fact that James Cameron actually did a Spider-Man movie. And they never released it, but I'm going to try my best to actually look this up, and eventually, maybe someday, I'll actually give thoughts about what I think about James Cameron's Spider-Man, even though that's another thing's like, oh, you dang hackers. If James Cameron did a Spider-Man script and it was never released, you should have dug in there and took that crap too. Took every single script you can find and throw it on the table. Maybe we could have even found the original Spider-Man 3 script, which most likely is very, very good. Oh, well, anyways, I'm done. So thank you for listening and I'm whipping out. Peace.